So I'm um, walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. Away, way too long, and I 
forgive myself Much harder to forget I want you to hold me and hear To mold me and speak me By the power of your word To be the sun you've called
Because my God has made a way for me. My sister Jay and Brother Dean can come forward. My brother Romy and my sister Laura can be doing this.
Very right, my brothers. That new song, this is the evening time. circumstances of life, dear God. I pray that you bless every child, my God. Lord, I pray for your precious word, my God. Be the breaker of your word, dear God. We are dependent upon thee, dear God, to inspire our minds, Lord, to direct our lips of claim, my God. Let something be said that shall be beneficial, Lord, to your children, my God, even those that are not here, my God. For whatever reasons, my God, I pray that your presence will be with them, my God. Lord, come this place under your blood, my God. May your presence be here today, my God. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ, and we thank you this day. Blessed be thy name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, brothers and sisters. We are thankful to the Lord to give us another opportunity to be in his presence. Before we go into God's word, we have a wedding invitation here this morning. It reads, Sashin, the eldest son of Mr. Sash Narayan Sami, 
and Mrs. Chinki Narayanasamy, and Prabhashni, youngest daughter of Mrs. Gono Gavinder and the late Mr. Johnny Gavinder, will be joined in holy union in the presence of God, witness their vows, share their love, and celebrate with them on Saturday, 20th March, 2010, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the AFM Church, High Street, Tonga. The entire church is invited to this wedding. So we have two weddings in March, Sister Anna and uh, Kunal. And uh, I think we're getting quite a few weddings in our church now. We'll be expecting some babies soon. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot less them. And we love to see them get married. And we love to see new ones added to the fellowship of God. I'm going to turn this morning in the book of Joshua. We read the speech of the Prime Minister of Israel on Wednesday, brothers and sisters, and we see that how powerful the wordings were, and we realize, my brothers and sisters, that spiritual Israel will no doubt in a short while also experience a new beginning in their life. But my brothers and sisters, we Gentiles have been afforded the privilege, my brothers and sisters, to live a victorious life for almost 2,000 years now. But my brothers and sisters, it seems like that Gentile mankind, my brothers and sisters, is slowly being pulled back, brothers and sisters, into the ways of the enemy because they have forgotten the message that God has given brothers and sisters through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. But yesterday, brothers and sisters, we spoke upon Rhea the harlot, we saw that she had a faith and she had a testimony, brothers and sisters, that somewhat outshone, brothers and sisters, that of even the Jewish people of that time. And my brothers and sisters, we believe that before the entire process is over, that God will have a bride, that will have a testimony that is powerful, and my brothers and sisters, a testimony that is very effective. And my brothers and sisters, as we look upon that thought, we will not want to forget that, my brothers, it takes something in the scriptures for us not to live a life of failure, but to live a life of victory. Amen. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to go into that thought from a life of failure and defeat to a life of victory. Amen. And we want to see how we can live that kind of a life. In Joshua chapter 3, it says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and he removed from Shittim, and came to Jordan. Amen. Now my brothers and sisters, we know that down through time, when man has read the word of God many times, he has read the word of God very kindly, and my brothers and sisters uh, has not found the proper, I would say, spiritual understanding of the word of God. And my brothers, if we are going to get any value out of the scriptures, we have to be able to have the understanding of the scriptures. Amen. Because it's the understanding of the scriptures that gives us, I would say, a firmness in our heart to be able to overcome whatever the enemy brings in our pathway of life. So when we see, brothers, the movement of the children of Israel from Shittim to Jordan, brothers and sisters, no doubt, inside their minds, they had a lot of I would say, historical remembrance of what the wilderness was like. We know, my brothers and sisters, that when God spoke to the children of Israel in Egypt, He showed them, my brothers, uh, how they can come out of Egypt and get into the wilderness. That was done because of a land that was slain. And we know, brothers, even today, the message is still the same. If we are to get out of this world and the pull of the world, we have to come via the Lamb of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other way. That's the only way, brothers and sisters, uh, we can have power over, I would say, the world. Because, my brothers, there's no way for us to come out of Egypt on our own. Because the world pulls at us. But we know there is a doorway through Jesus Christ. But we see, my brothers, when the children of Israel uh, came out of Egypt, 
Brothers said, God tested them. And when God tested them, my brothers said, they many times looked back uh, to get back to Egypt. And because of that, my brothers and sisters, uh, the entire clan uh, perished uh, in the wilderness. Because, brothers, uh, it was symbolic of defeat, of failure. And my brothers and sisters, they felt if they were in Egypt, uh, maybe they could have lived a better life. But my brothers and sisters, uh, we see that God uh, never wanted his people to ever live a defeated life. Brothers and sisters, we may have shortcomings in our life. There may be moments of defeat in our life. There may be times of failure. But God has never intended any born again child of God to live permanently in a life of defeat and failure. If we are prepared uh, to look at the word of God, if we are prepared uh, to see what God has provided for us, I believe uh, we can rise above our defeat. We can rise above our failure. We can find uh, the victory, uh, not that we are going to achieve, uh, but what has already been achieved for us. Because remember brothers, uh, we live by grace. Whatever we achieve in this life, has already been provided for us. It is just that sometimes uh, we live in ignorance and we have not come to understand uh, what God uh, has provided for us. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. It's not natural carnal human knowledge. It's divine knowledge. It's revelatory knowledge. It's knowledge that comes uh, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. But remember brothers, uh, we can read the words of the scriptures. But it will take the Holy Spirit to apply the scripture to our heart. To give us brothers uh, inside uh, really a vitality uh, that this is true. But remember brothers, uh, whatever we are reading today, it's either God just wanted it to be written uh, to fill some pages in a book or He wanted it to come off the pages of the book uh, and become a reality in our heart. Because remember brothers, uh, we are going to face a lot of uh, setbacks in our life. The purpose uh, that it comes many times uh, is Satan's way to disprove uh, that God is true. When he brings about failure and defeat, his intention is, uh, see, the word of God is not true. Look, uh, if it was true, it would have not happened. But my brothers and sisters, uh, that is uh, what Satan wants to paint before us. But God's intention is that we do not live by sight. We live by faith. Brothers and sisters, we don't go by what we see. No matter how many failures we have in life, that doesn't mean God's word uh, has failed. Because God can use that uh, for different purposes in our life. So brothers, uh, we have to look at uh, that God is slowly but surely wanted to ingrain uh, in the children of God a picture. And my brothers and sisters, if it was uh, something that was theological knowledge, we could have had a chalk body here this morning and uh, wrote something out there and said, well, if you know that, uh, then you can live a life of victory. But it does not come that way. Amen. Yes, it is still worse in the scriptures. But brothers, uh, God many times uh, uses stories, illustrations, parables, so that it can speak to our spirit and not only our mind. Yes, it comes by our mind. But brothers and sisters, in a finality, it has to be lost in our spirit. Because remember brothers and sisters, once in our mind we catch a picture, then my brothers, that picture does not leave you. No matter how old you get, no matter how many battles comes your way, brothers, uh, that picture begins to get brighter and brighter as we go. Now my brothers, God could allow them Joshua to go in any other route, to go into Canaan's land. The wilderness we see in the scriptures symbolizes a life of circles, a life of failure, a life, brothers, of defeats. 
Yet, brothers, God can use that wilderness experience to mold us, to shape us, to teach us many things uh, as we read in the scriptures. He keeps the best for the end. Amen. God proves us in these kind of uh, situations. But He does not intend uh, to keep us in the wilderness. His uh, intention is that we make a choice. That we want to cross over Jordan. And we want to go uh, into the land uh, that He has provided for us. Amen. That is not after we die. That is not after we live th leave this world. No, brothers, sir, it is down here on earth. We make a choice that we want to cross over Jordan. Mm -hmm. My brother, sir, if we never make that choice, if we never come to the point of that choice, we will always live in the wilderness, mm -hmm. running in circles, living in defeat, always having failure, never knowing victory in our life. But brothers and sisters, as I said again, the failures will come. But if we know how to cross over Jordan, then we will start experiencing uh, the victories of the law. Because really speaking, the victory is not something uh, we acquire. It has already been acquired. It's the only thing we say we receive it from the law. Because remember brothers, all of what we are reading is only types of something that has already been fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, so in order to understand that God wrote this, we need to be able to read the story. So he says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. And my brothers and sisters, we know that the word Jordan means the river of death, or can symbolize death. And my brothers, the he and all the children of Israel <coughs> and lords there before they passed over. Brothers and sisters, they didn't just rush and cross over Jordan. They lost there for a little while because it was a time of reflection. It's a time to think. It's a time to make a choice. Will we cross over Jordan? Now my brothers, the, the time that they were there wasn't when the river Jordan was shallow. It was that brothers and sisters harvest time and the river was overflowing its banks. In other words, uh, brothers, the river was uh, in its most powerful source of time. Brothers, you could see logs being uh, flown down the river Jordan, maybe trees, maybe shrubs, uh, maybe rocks rolling over. And my brothers, in the mind of every person uh, that was looking at this river, they realized, uh, no, uh, we don't want to make a choice to cross over. Because uh, if we do cross over, we will die. My brothers, many times, that is where we are brought in our Christian walk of life. Amen. We could have been brought to this point uh, in our past, I would say, way of life. But sometimes as we journey on, we forget what took place in our life. And the devil's intention is for us to forget so that we rely that well, we are fighting uh, and achieving victories in our life in our own strength. But my brothers and sisters, that is why God's intention was for them never to forget this day. Because when you read the book of Joshua, you will see that all the time Joshua came back to Gilgal, which is near Jordan. And he reflected what took place that day in Jordan. My brothers in our life, whenever we are going through failure, defeat, or whatever it can be, God's intention for us is for us to go back to Calvary and to be able to see where Jesus won our victory. Because remember brothers, uh, it all depends uh, what you're looking at. Because if you don't see what fully was accomplished uh, at Calvary, the, je the devil will be happy for a partial victory. But brothers and sisters, Jesus did not acquire a partial victory for us. He acquired a full victory. Amen. My brothers, that full victory is just not something uh, while well, I became a Christian uh, or maybe I got rid of my drinking or my smoking uh, or maybe uh, I got rid of this. No, brothers, uh, 
Jesus' intention was uh, that we be liberated uh, from everything uh, that Satan brought our way. His intention was never to give us uh, a partial victory. His intention was uh, to give us a complete victory. And my brothers, uh, that's why many times in this life, brothers and sisters, Christians, come to a certain point, and after a while, they move back to a more comfortable zone. But my brothers and sisters, in Canaan's land, in the life of the spirit for the believer, there is no, I would say, brothers, rest in the sense uh, that there's no battle. There is an inner rest. That brothers, uh, they are now uh, in a permanent land. They're not moving in circles. But brothers and sisters, there's always a warfare that is taking place. Amen. So he says, And it came to pass after three days that the officers went to those. Brothers and sisters, a clear cut message was being given to the entire host. And my brothers and sisters, uh, it's the same with us. We have to be able to have a clear vision, brothers and sisters, uh, of this message that came to us. Brothers and sisters that made us leave the wilderness and go into a life of brothers and sisters, I would say, uh, that would be liber liberation for our inner man. Because we see the message was clear. And it says, and they commanded the people saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Brothers, I wanted to see now. The focus has shifted. It didn't say when you see the river Jordan in all its power. Because that is what they were worrying about. It did not talk about them, about Egypt. All about the wilderness. The point they were being focused to was when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, we have to understand the ark of the covenant symbolizes the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because without Him, we would never have been redeemed. Amen. Without Him, we will know no liberation. Without him, my brothers, sir, we would still be in the clutches of sin and in failure. Without what he accomplished, brothers, sir, there would be no victory in our life. We would continuously be harassed by the devil. And my brothers, sir, we would just have to succumb to him. That is why, my brothers, the message was very clear. As we are now making uh, this inroad uh, to the other side, to Canaan's land, they have to keep their eyes on the Ark of the Covenant. Brothers, uh, at that time it was a time. But we are living on this side of the time. Amen. We are living uh, when it came into existence uh, and uh, it has brought forth the results of it. So brothers, uh, the message still remains the same. We cannot keep our eyes on anything else. That's why uh, Paul said, uh, looking uh, for the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, let us run the race with patience. Amen. So the message does not change. The message is still the same. If you want to live a life of victory and not defeat, uh, you cannot keep your eyes uh, on something else. You've got to keep your eyes uh, on the one uh, that claimed your victory or brought your victory. Amen. Because brothers and sisters, uh, the devil's intention uh, is for us to worry. Yes, to be concerned. There is a time for those things. But brothers, uh, never lose your main focus. He said you keep your eyes on the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. And the priests, the Levites bearing it. Then shall you remove from your place and go after it. So let's visualize the picture. Brothers, it's not the people rushing to cross over Jordan. Because if they did, they would have all died. Because the river was overflowing its banks. But brothers and sisters, Joshua said that the Ark of the Covenant will go first. Brothers and sisters, that's point number one. 
You have to learn in your Christian walk of life. You seek the kingdom of God first. You let Christ walk before you. You put Him ahead of you. No, He's not walking ahead of you here in front of you. It's in your heart that He's walking ahead of you. It's whether He has been given first place in your life. Because remember, brothers and sisters, uh, nobody sees uh, whether you put Christ in front of you. It's whether you made a choice to be able to say, brothers and sisters, Christ will be in front of me. So brothers and sisters, in this life, if we want to cross over our bridges we cannot cross, our problems of life, our situations of life, and we want to cross it by ourselves. We will perish. We will never even make it across. But brothers and sisters, the message is clear. Keep your eyes on the Ark of the Covenant. And keep your little distance. Because you've got to see the way. So he says, Then shall you remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Some brothers and sisters, 3,000 feet in difference. Brothers, why did God allow that to happen? So that the people can have a clear view of what is taking place. Brothers, 2,000 years ago, God did not crucify His Son in a dark room somewhere. Brothers, he did it in a public place on a mountain called Calvary where everybody in full view can see it. Brothers, the devils, the Roman, I would say powerful army and the public so that a written testimony can be made of it. Brothers and sisters, so God allowed a little space so that there will be a clear message and no confusion. My brothers and sisters, we have to be able to have that kind of a clarity in our mind so that we can overcome and live a life of victory. Because when things go wrong in your life, you cannot be saying, well, where, where is my problem? I don't know what to look at. Brothers, there has to be a clear picture in your mind. Because remember, brothers, God sent His Son to destroy the works of Satan. To destroy all that he brought in the past, in the present, and in the future. And whenever, brothers, the, the, the picture is confused, God needs to bring a little clarity in our mind. So that, brothers, we see a clear picture. And he says, there must be a space, come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you may go. For you have not passed this way yet or, or, or before. Brothers and sisters, we cannot say we have known the way to victory. Brothers and sisters, sir, if we went by the way we came in this life, our life would have been a life of confusion. And my brothers and sisters, we took the Spirit of God to show us the way to victory. That's why, brothers, God allowed a little space there. And then he says, and Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders amongst you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, pass over before the people. And they took the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. And they may know that I, that I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we read this story, the focus is totally upon my brother Seth, the Ark of the Covenant, and the priests that are upholding the Ark of the Covenant. But my brothers, if that is all we see, then my brothers, we will not be able to see how victory will come our way. Because remember what God was doing at that moment of time. Yes, firstly, it was, I would say, the Ark of the Covenant that was in prominence. But my brothers and sisters, we have to see that the way that they trod 
was going to be the same way that every other Israeli Jew was going to cross over. They were not going to go some other way. They were not going to find a shortcut. They were going to see the way that the Ark of the Covenant led and they were going to follow in its footsteps. Now what is the story of it? Brothers and sisters, for almost 2,000 years we know that the gospel of redemption and the gospel of salvation has been preached to the world. And we know, brothers and sisters, uh, that people have seen that Jesus was the Lamb of God. And they know that Jesus died for their sins. And it's because of that they bear redemption. And my brothers, their sins have been uh, washed away. But we know, brothers and sisters, if Jesus Christ only came to be able to pay a price for us, to be able to shed His blood, and there was nothing done about the nature in us that causes us to be a failure, Amen. that causes us to be defeated, Amen. that causes us not to have victory, then Jesus would have done uh, our work. Amen. Jesus uh, would have not accomplished because my brothers, He would pay the price. But brothers and sisters, the devil would still be alive. Amen. Brothers and sisters, just like if all that was going to be done here in Joshua's story, that my brothers and sisters, the priest would stand in the midst of Jordan, and my brothers, nothing was going to be done to Jericho. Brothers and sisters, the devil's kingdom would still have been reigning. Brothers and sisters, and the people would have crossed over, and they would have become many times servants to the devil's kingdom. Brothers and sisters, God's intention was, when he took his people out of Egypt, he did not want them to stay in the wilderness. He wanted them to make a clean sweep over Jordan. And my brother said, uh, then he will show them uh, how the devil was defeated uh, by what happened uh, in the midst of Jordan. Remember brothers, every victory was accomplished by the work that was done in the midst of Jordan. Because remember, brothers and sisters, it's right there. We see, brothers and sisters, that's why Moses could say to Joshua, the Lord has given you the land. The Lord could say, the Lord has given it to you. Rahab could say, the Lord has given it to you. But how? Which was the way? Amen. Brothers and sisters, the way was what was all symbolic in that ark standing in the midst of Jordan. So it says, and thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Now, my brothers and sisters, the Jordan is overflowing its banks. Brothers and sisters, the current is too heavy. How can Joshua say to these priests, Go and stand in the midst of Jordan and stand still? Amen. And my brothers and sisters, that is something natural mind cannot comprehend. But it is a symbolic meaning. Because uh, 2,000 years later, whatever time later, Jesus Christ, when he crosses from the Garden of Gethsemane, Brothers and sisters, you don't see him ever blinking an eye. You don't see him, brothers and sisters, uh, turning and running another way. Brothers, when he was put upon the cross, Amen. brothers, he had already said, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he finally said, it is finished. In other words, brothers, uh, just as uh, the priests are standing with the Ark of the Covenant in the midst uh, of this torrential uh, Jordan, brothers and sisters, uh, when Jesus said it is finished, everything would have come still. Brothers and sisters, uh, the sin question uh, would have been dealt with. The nature of your life would have been dealt with. Brothers and sisters, uh, the resurrection uh, power would have been dealt with uh, and Satan would have been dealt with. Now you see, brothers, the devil would never want you to know 
Brothers and sisters, uh, what was accomplished? Because you want you to realize, uh, well, uh, yes, maybe they crossed over Jordan. Maybe Jesus died on Calvary, that's true. But you see, look at this problem you have. Look at the situation you got. Look at the logic that is out there. Now my brother, if it wasn't for those problems, you will not investigate the word of God. You will not search for an answer. You will not go back to Calvary. You will not go back to the Lord Jordan. You will not go back to the other aspects of the word of God to say, Lord, where do we find our key and our answer? Because remember, brothers, God will not come and give you a new revelation of how to be able to find victory in the law. Because it is already in the sketches. It's already in the word of God. It's for you to say, Lord, uh, I see it has been accomplished. I believe it. Remember, brothers and sisters, what we're talking about today is not whether it is true or not true. It's not whether it may happen or it may not happen. Brothers and sisters, you may lose your job tomorrow. You may get another job next month or you may not get another job next month. Depending on what the program of God is. Brothers and sisters, you may lose your car. You may or you may not. Because that is not accomplished fact. That is in the plan of God. But my brothers and sisters, when we are talking about whether the blood of Jesus Christ is the atonement for a child of God, then whether God will accept it or not, it is not a maybe so. It is an accomplished fact. Because God raised His Son Jesus from the dead and took Him to the right hand of the throne. It is not what will it happen if I believe it or not. Brothers, whether you believe it or not, it is an accomplished fact. Jesus already rose from the tomb. The tomb is empty. And so it is not whether you believe it or not. Brothers and sisters, that's why the devil doesn't want that fact to be known. Number two, it's not whether God will do something about my nature or not. It has already been done. It's whether you believe the fact or not. And my brothers and sisters, that is why many times, we see, brothers and sisters, people, they fail to believe what facts God has given because they look at the circumstances and the situations. Brothers and sisters, you may be right here today. I would say that currents of joy may be so strong in your life. You may be thinking, Lord, how will I ever be able to overcome this? Whether it is a problem or an addiction, Oh, it is uh, whatever it can be. Remember, brothers, there is no powerful symbolism more than the powerful flow of the river joy. Brothers and sisters, in all its potent power, in all its deadly power, it was coming down. But brothers and sisters, God has spoken Joshua and said, if the priests stand there, that power will be stopped. And my brothers, before the foundation of the world, God knew how he was going to stop the power of the devil. God knew how he was going to stop the power that comes in our life. God knew exactly what the answer was. We may not have known it. Brothers, the world may have not known it, but God knew what was the antidote, what was the remedy. That's why, brothers and sisters, it was up to the priest to believe Joshua's word and make the choice. Brothers and sisters, there could have been a lot of people that day that said, we, we want to turn back and go the other side. We don't want to cross over. And today it's the same way. There's a lot of people, brothers and sisters, that will say, well, I tried this and I tried that and I tried everything. And it didn't work. But my brothers and sisters, somewhere along the line, for you to get victory in your life, you will have to make the decision I am prepared to die in joy. And my brothers and sisters, God is not asking you to just die in Jordan and die there. Because remember brothers and sisters, we cannot crucify ourselves. 
No man can do it on his own. Somebody else is supposed to crucify someone. The brothers and sisters, we have to see in the scriptures how we was crucified in Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, I know it's very awesome, I'm not going to try and hold you long, but I'm trying to go as fast as possible. And it says in Joshua, said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God is amongst you. Hereby you shall know that the living God is amongst you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is no ten ways for us to know whether the living God is in us. Amen. We have to come by that one root that God has projected. And that He will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites. Brothers and sisters, whatever you want to envision that is problematic in your life, you can go and read the story of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Evites, the Perizzites, the Gazites, and the Amorites, and the Jezebites, whatever it is, put everything out of this world or everything in your life. God's promise to drive them out. My brothers and sisters, he didn't say I'll do it in a day. You take Josh, Joshua's episodes lasted almost 20 odd years. But that doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, you don't see victory upon victory. Brothers, you're going to be moving on for God and let God accomplish it in your life. But brothers, the focus is not on yourself. The focus is on the Ark of the Covenant, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, what he has accomplished. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of the wilderness, the Lord of Jericho, the Lord of all the earth. Pass it over before you into Jordan. Brothers and sisters, it's important. Jesus Christ tasted death for you. Amen. Jesus Christ was crucified for you. Amen. Jesus Christ carried your load of sin. Amen. Jesus Christ uh, in his flesh. Brothers and sisters, bore your sinful nature. <coughs> so brothers and sisters, when you say, well, I'm scared to go into joy. I'm scared to go into this phase in my life. It says the Ark of the Covenant passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of a man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the Ark of the Lord, and the, and the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that, that be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. My brothers and sisters, for almost 4,000 years, in the bloodstream of humanity was flowing the deadly waters of Jordan. Brothers, before Jesus Christ came and died on Calvary, brothers and sisters, uh, down through time, the king of Jericho, Satan, and all his powers looked at the river Jordan and said, Nobody will cross that river. That's a powerful river. We pray to the God above. Everyone that crosses it will die before they come uh, to destroy our kingdom. My brothers and sisters, a simple little Ark of the Covenant was going to stand in the midst of joy and all that powerful water is going to stand there. Right. My brothers and sisters, when you come to understand by the Spirit of the Lord the powerful message that is in that, that this power of sin that gripped your life, that made you do the things that you did in your life, that causes all the problems in your life, that causes the anxieties, situations. Brothers and sisters, the day you come to realize the power 
in the Ark of the Covenant or in the Lord Jesus Christ or what it symbolizes. Right. That's the day that power of the sin is going to be stopped. Yeah. Remember brothers, this was not something accomplished for writing a fairy tale story. This was to tell us how many times have you seen brothers and sisters, individuals whose lives have been wrecked by sin, by slavery, by powerful situations of life. They almost gave up brothers and sisters because they lived a life of defeat. And one day brothers they said, Lord, I make a choice. I don't understand it, but I come and stand here today so that Lord, I identify myself with the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, how we have seen in people's lives, brothers and sisters, sometimes it's the next day. Not in all cases, but brothers, it's to show that the power is still the same. Amen. The mighty Jordan will stand back. If you are able to make the choice, remember brothers, it is not something to be done. It's something that has been done. Amen. It's something for you to believe and to accept. Because remember brothers, the same powerful Jordan was in my life, as it was in Ronnie's life, as it was in Basil's life, or any other person's life. But it came a time they identified themselves with that finished work. They had to understand that they had to die to that old joy, that old nature, that old man. But brothers, we don't have the power to hold that joy. Nobody has the power in themselves. But brothers and sisters, that Ark of the Covenant symbolizes the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Lord of the universe that walks, brothers and sisters, was walking in Jesus Christ. That's what it says. And rest in Jordan, and it, come, and it shall come to pass when the people remove from the tents. Brothers, it was not the people to cross over Jordan first. It was the Ark of the Covenant to go first. So if we try to fight our battles on our own, we will fail. Because, brothers and sisters, the, the plan that God has given is the Ark goes first, and the people go second. And you know, so many times in our life, when we become a Christian, the first three years of our life, we, we put the ark ahead of us. Jesus is in front of us. Everything is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But after a year, maybe it's sweet for you. Brothers and sisters, something else becomes sweet. Something else has taken over. So brothers and sisters, what does God do? Brothers and sisters, many times Jordan starts flowing again. Many times, that same defeated devil, he says, well, this is my opportunity now. You know, I was pushed and locked in a cupboard, but somebody just opened the cupboard. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, we have to see if there is failure, if there is, brothers and sisters, defeat. Somewhere along the line, let's look and see whether the ark is in front of us. Amen. And he says, and as they bear the ark, where? Come, and as they bear that ark, will come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. See, brothers, it wasn't, they never even walked right inside. Brothers and sisters, so it tells me, it wasn't the toe of the priest that had the power. It wasn't, brothers, the shoe of the priest. It was what was inside the ark of the covenant. What was the symbolic meaning? Because in the Ark of the Covenant was the mercy seat, was the wooden box, was, brothers, the Ten Commandments, the Word of God. That is what God looked at. I'll say today, brothers, the devil does not fear how much of self-effect we have, how powerful our vocabulary in life can be, how, brothers and sisters, how much of diamonds or vans we have in our pockets. You know what the devil fears? Is what I read into it. It fears if you understand what is there. Because he knows when you understand that, you understand what happened 2,000 years ago, and he knows that Jesus defeated him, and he doesn't 
want you to know he's defeated. Because when you know he's defeated, he knows you have victory. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that's the victory he doesn't want you to have. He wants us to wake up in the morning all finished in life. He wants us to go through our life defeated. Brothers and sisters, that doesn't mean we will never get tired in life. That never means we'll never have our takes. But we will always find a way back. We will always know how to crush the enemy under our feet. Amen. It doesn't matter if you have a car crash. It doesn't matter if your son is going astray. It doesn't matter if something is going wrong in your family. Brothers, you will know where the answer lies. No matter how long it takes, sir, you will know where it lies. If Jesus doesn't do something about it, brothers and sisters, there's no other power that can do something. It's for you to keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Run the race with patience and have that revelation inside your heart. It's a finished, accomplished one. When their feet touched, brothers, the brim of the water, for the Jordan overflowed all his banks, all at the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose upon, and upon as a heap. From, from the city and brothers and sisters why did God ever allow that to be written he could say well it was a coincidence but I don't look at it as a coincidence from that point where Adam sinned in the garden of Eden brothers that river has flowed in our bloodstream that death there never was a time that there was anyone who could stop it. There never was a time it could have ever heaped up and flown in, in another direction. Brothers and sisters, that day with that symbolism and that Ark of the Covenant that was carried, brothers and sisters, that waters knew how to go back. And I want to say, brothers, the law of sin and death that is in our life. It will always ride in our life unless our higher law comes inside. An aeroplane will sit on the ground, brothers and sisters, no matter how much of powerful wings it has and gasoline. But let that pilot turn the key. Let him start those engines. There's another law in operation. And my brothers and sisters, it's a simple fact. That Jesus Christ stood there and his intention was that he needed to come in our life and be that higher law in our life so that brothers and sisters the waters can go back. And my brothers it says from Adam that is besides Zeratim and those that came down towards the sea of the plain even the salt sea failed. Brothers the life in the wilderness was a failure but now Everything has failed, but there was victory for the children of Israel. Amen. And it says they were cut off. And the people passed over right against John, uh, against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood not on shaky ground. They stood on firm and dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground. Until all the people were passed clean over. And my brothers, when that was done, Joshua commanded 12 individuals of the 12 tribes, brothers, to pick up 12 stones out of the midst of Jordan. The 12 stones that all the time came under the current of the river Jordan was messed with the power of the river Jordan was brothers under its, I would say, slavery for all the time. Take it out of the river Jordan and bring it onto the side of Canaan's land. What was it symbolic of brothers and sisters? It was symbolic in the sense that my brothers, one day Jesus Christ will die. But my brothers and sisters, he will rise again. He rose out of the river Jordan on the third day. My brothers and sisters, that resurrected power was placed on the other side.
For people to know, we're not going to go back to the life of the wilderness. We're not going to go back to the life of failure and defeat. We're not going to sit, brothers and sisters, uh, in the sense, be overcome by the river joy. And we will live under the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. But he didn't do that alone. You can go read it in chapter 4. We'll take it up some other time. But then he also took 12 stones from brothers and sisters, the side of Gilgal, of Canaan's land. He took it and he put it in the midst where that priest stood. Brothers and sisters, we can say, well, brother, I passed the stage. You know, there was a day. I, I, I accepted what happened on Calvary. I'm now in Canaan's land. I'm 20, 30 years in Canaan's land. But then, my brothers, what was the reason for Joshua to take the stones that came, brothers and sisters, on this side of Canaan's land and put it back in the river Jordan? It was for us to realize when we are fighting the enemy on the other side, when we are going through our struggles in life, we must know how we got our victory. There was a day, brothers and sisters, we were in the river Jordan. And we have to abide in a crucified life in Jesus Christ. And that is the only way you will live your life of victory on the other side of Jordan. That is the reason God placed that there. But you see, brothers, God gave a very, I would say, vivid explanation. Twelve stones taken out of the river, twelve stones taken and put in the river. But when we come to Jesus Christ, when we look on Calvary, we say, well, you know what? I know Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago. I know He shed His blood. And then we put a full stop. We don't see what happened further. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, even you know sin, He came sin. So that we can have the righteousness of Christ. Amen. The Bible says to the Apostle Paul, I am crucified with Christ. The twelve stones that was on the other side as to see they died in Jesus. In Jesus Christ was not only Jesus, but your nature was in them. And my brothers and sisters. But you know, we come to that point and know well, yes, I died in Jesus. And then we find victory. But you know, brothers and sisters, in that box that I talked about, the devil knew that he was defeated by Jesus Christ. Yeah. He knows today that he's a defeated foe. Yes. Because Jesus rose triumphantly. Amen. But you know, brothers and sisters, he's the one that comes out of the box from time to time. He causes the heartaches. He causes the problems. He causes the situations. Then he makes us forget all that we talked about. He never happened. He never crossed over Jordan. He never took place. He never died in Jesus Christ. I am not a defeated one. I am ruling over your life. Brothers and sisters, if you can sell Satan, you're a liar. Amen. You're a defeated one. You are the one that is causing these situations in my life. Now, I want you to know Jesus Christ defeated you. Don't you know that story? Don't you remember that story? Don't you know the blood was shed? Brothers, don't you remember? And Jesus stood one day in the synagogue and opened, brothers and sisters, in Luke and he read, Isaiah 61, I have come to open the blind eyes Amen. and to set the captives free and to bring liberation to them that sit in prison. Brothers and sisters, Jesus gave the message. The devil comes to paint another message. Now I would like to say, brothers and sisters, when you really see, firstly, how you will come out of Egypt to the shed blood of Jesus Christ, then you see how that you must crucify in Jesus Christ. That holds Jordan back. And you see, brothers, a higher power has come inside of you. Then you have to also recognize, you're not fighting and losing that. 
you are fighting a battle that has already been won. Why has it been won? Because the devil has lost the battle and he is a defeated enemy. Brothers, how could we ever fight a defeated enemy and lose the battle? Unless we don't know our Bible rights. That is why, brothers and sisters, so many times in our Christian walk of life, why many times, brothers and sisters, our loved ones, our children, are living lives of bondage, living lives of slavery to sin, living lives, brothers, under the captivity of Satan. It's because of the lack of knowledge my people perish. It's because somehow, brothers, the enemy has blinded their eyes, the God of this world. So let's pray, brothers, somehow, that the same truth that is in the Word of God may become a living reality. That they may be able to see that my brothers and sisters, that price has already been paid. Amen. Brothers, the power to overcome Jordan has already been dealt with. And Satan has been defeated. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, when you come to know that, God will give you an assurance in your heart. You'll pick up the pieces and you'll say, Lord, I want to walk in you, Lord. Amen. Lord, I may not know how to do it. But Lord, I'm not going to go in front of you. I'm going to put that ark in front of me. I'm going to hold the hand of Jesus Christ. I'm going to hold that power that is the superpower in my life. And I'm going to move forward. Brothers and sisters, that story has not changed. That formula has not changed. That is still the same in the Word of God. And my brothers and sisters, the only difference is the Word has become so more powerful in the sense of presenting their picture. And my brothers and sisters, we listen to more of the picture of the world than the picture of the word of God. And then we begin to realize, Lord, something is going wrong. Brothers and sisters, if we can turn back the symbol pages of the word of God, able God victory through brothers and sisters the right sacrifice. Amen. My brothers and sisters, when Moses saw the people were bitten by serpents, he made a brazen serpent and he put it upon that pole. And he said to the people, look and you shall live. Look, brothers, by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But you know, brothers and sisters, people today haven't got the time. They want to say, brother, finish your sermon, you know. Just give me John 3, 16. That is all you will get. If that's how far you go. But the story does not stop there. Right. Jesus not only died to shed his blood. Amen. Jesus represented you. Amen. You don't only see two thieves on the cross. You see yourself in Jesus Christ. Amen. And you see that you was crucified. My brothers, you walk with Jesus Christ. And you see how he defeated the devil. And you see, brothers and sisters, how you took the keys out of the hand of Satan. And you see how you rose from the dead. And I don't have the time this morning, but you go and read Ephesians chapter 2. And you have been quickened that we're caught up in sin and in trespasses. <laughs> that we can be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Father, principalities and powers. Amen. How come? The principalities and powers are above us. The only way it can be is if we are not living in Jesus Christ. Amen. If we are living in Jesus, then we are living above principalities and powers. Amen. Who are the principalities and powers? Ephesians chapter 6, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, wicked powers in heavenly places. And what did He give us? He gave us, put on the full armor of God. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, He says we shall overcome the wiles of the devil. Amen. And my brothers, put on the shield of faith. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, praying up to the Lord. So I want to say, brothers and sisters, the devil has been a better picture to the world because he wants the world not to ever believe. He is defeated. Brothers and sisters, 
Don't listen to his story. No matter how many defeats come your way. Brothers, that is a fact that cannot be changed. Jesus defeated the devil. Amen. Jesus was allowed by God to represent you. And he said, those are facts. They cannot be wiped out of the scriptures. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, when you accept the facts and believe the facts, you say, brother, but you know, I believe what you said. Brothers and sisters, the priest could have said, Joshua, you know, Joshua, you're such a lovely man. We believe what you're saying. Joshua could have said, Priest, if you believe what I said, then you touch the water. If you touch the water and you believe, God will do the work. And I believe, brothers and sisters, if we touch by faith what Jesus Christ has done, yes, the water of Jordan will be stopped. Satan's defeat, defeat over your life, will be accomplished. Because, brothers, he wants to write our life. He wants to bring us in despondency and defeat. Now I want to tell you brothers and sisters, many times he comes to cloud your life. And when he sees, oh my, you saw that again now. You read that again now. He backs up. He goes behind and says, well, go back in the box. I'll wait when you forget the story. Brothers and sisters, don't forget the story. It's a story to be kept alive. It's a story to be told to our children. It's a story to be told whenever we have the time. I know it is hard to tell the story to our children now. Some of them may not be five years. Some of them may not be ten years. Some of them may be married. Some of them may be too old to tell the story. But the story is still the same. Amen. It does not change. If they will ever accomplish a victory, is when they come and know what was accomplished. Amen. It's not the money, it's not the gold, it's not the silver, it's not all the talk. That is going to be able to do the job. It's a job that has already been accomplished. And brothers and sisters, God is faithful. If we accept what He did in His Son Jesus Christ, Brothers, he can accomplish the same things in our life. That is why I have to say, brothers, I can also say I was young and I'm getting down in age. I see the story to be the same. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that mighty Jordan was stopped when I came to understand Jesus Christ not only died for me, but I died in Jesus Christ. Amen. That was key number one. But when I knew that key and I rejoiced in that key and I was happy about it, sometimes you forget the picture who is behind. There's a dirty old devil that wants to rear up his head and say, I'm not defeated. And you better turn around and also know and tell him, Satan, you're defeated. Now take your dirty hands over my family, over my children, over my loved ones. My brothers and sisters, that as much as you can do. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, leave the rest to God. And I believe you have peace in your heart. You'll be able to take your life in the right stride and you'll walk here. And my brothers and sisters, God, because remember, you read the story. Joshua died of an old age. 120 years. The Bible says his eyes are still full of power. Amen. Brothers and sisters, and what did he say? He said, I know maybe a lot of you will not look that. Bad. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you see, brothers, a lot of times people think when you repeat that, you're talking about you and your family. But that represents Jesus Christ and the body of Christ. Amen. As for Jesus and his body, we will serve God. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, I believe that will be the truth that should be embedded in our heart. And we will want to walk on for God. Let's stand to our feet today. Let's look to Him. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, dear God, that we can be here today. Knowing, Lord, You are the God that has watched over our life. You guided us, you led us, Lord. Father, we know it is so hot, Lord. But Father, we want to live a victorious life for you, my God. And we know, dear God, that our answers in your
your scriptures, Lord. Answers, Lord, that we have to know, my God. We have to embrace, Lord. We have to work with, my God. So many times, dear Lord, the enemy comes our way, Lord. Puts us down, makes us feel, Lord. There is no answer, Lord. But there is an answer in your way, Lord. It's still the same old, Lord, answer in your way, my God. Help us to embrace it, Lord. And walk forward in it, my God. Bless your people today. If there's a child that stands in need of prayer, Lord, bless your people, Lord. Guide them, lead them. Let them know who walked before them, Lord. Let them put that ark of the covenant, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, head of their life. Lord, they shall have victory in their life, Lord. Bless us now, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your glory and honor. Blessed be thy name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing a song to the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Oh.